Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 69 with me Craig Barton where each week I pick out one of my favourite resources and we look in depth at how it might be used in the classroom. Now I was doing my regular batch of resource reviews that I do for TES Maths every couple of months or so and I stumbled upon this resource and it just hooked me straight in. How do you construct a 50p which has been uploaded by the wonderful British Museum? Oh, and I should say as well at this point, welcome to the New Look TES resource website. Absolutely ideal. You get a lovely little preview of the resources and you can download them all in one batch. So this uh, contains a single resource, which is um, a PDF file. And if you download it, it looks like this. Now, before we even crack on with this resource, the reason this interested me is I was having a little conversation um, with one of my friends in a pub about uh, 50ps and 20ps. <laughs> These are the kind of people I hang out with. Um, and they told me an interesting fact that I thought was an absolute load of rubbish. And that was that 50p's and 20p's and similarly curved coins have an amazing property that they have a constant diameter. So um, let, sides opposite each other are the same width all around the shape. And I thought about this and I thought, no, that, that can't be true because um, only circles have that property. But sure enough, um, it is true. And there's a whole branch of shapes called this. And um, I've included a link on the blog post uh, to a Wikipedia article on this. Um, on the, <laughs> my pronunciation is horrendous. I'm gonna go for Rillo triangle. Um, and the uh, 50p is an example of a Rillo heptagon. And here they are, they are shapes of constant width. And you can, you can test this by rolling them uh, along and they'll always stay the same height uh, along the table. And there's lots of practical reasons why coins uh, are made in this way, uh, not least because it stops them getting jammed in, in kind of vending machines and stuff like that. So the fact that I was having this conversation and then I stumbled upon uh, this resource, just thought, I just thought I've got to include this because uh, this is a construction uh, activity but it's an absolutely wonderful one because the students get to practice loads of stuff so here we go using straight edges and compasses measuring angles and um, symmetries of shapes describing shapes and there's, there's loads more hidden in there as well uh, now one one way you can do this and this is the most open-ended way um, is you can just say to the students show them a 50p and say right i want you to geometrically construct that 50p uh, but flipping it, that's quite a tricky, tricky thing to do. So what I actually did with my year 11s, I opened up with that and we shared a few ideas around. And then what I actually did is I just showed them this diagram there because there is the construction, but even that's very, very tricky to do because they've got to do all the correct measuring. They've got to essentially get a circle into play, but then they've got to figure out how to get the, these arcs and P and Q's a tangent. So it led us into discussions about tangents and how to draw those and all that kind of stuff. Thankfully, there are some uh, construction instructions, which <laughs> rhymes a little bit, going on down here, which is which is really nice as well, which will, will guide the students along. But it was just a lovely lesson um, on loci and constructions, but also just a really interesting thing to, to look at and talk about. And then once we had our things constructed, we could start talking about the properties of them. So we could do like fairly dull things like work out the areas of each of these sectors and all that kind of stuff. But we were more interested in the symmetry um, of these, the line symmetry and the rotation symmetry. And also going back to that fascinating thing about how the diameters of these shapes um, are the same all the way through curves of constant width or whatever you want to call them. So there you go, a lovely little resource that I know is not going to be for all classes, but for an enrichment activity for perhaps say a, a particularly able year 9, 10 or 11 group, perhaps you, you're doing the low kind construction bit or perhaps you've got a one-off lesson and you just want to get them doing something in a slightly different context, I can wholeheartedly recommend it. It was a tough lesson, but the kids really, really enjoyed it and it gave them something to talk about. They're all going home and telling their mums, dads, grannies, granddads, aunts and uncles about this interesting property of coins that none of them knew before and I certainly didn't know it before me conversation in the pub so there it is uh, how do you construct a 50p uploaded by the British Museum give it a go and let me know how you get on and I will return with a fresh resource of the week next week take care and bye for now